Isaiah chapter 26. This chapter has a lot of wonderful thoughts and verses in it. Uh, verse 12 says, thou wilt, or, or thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou hast wrought all our works in us. And what a blessing the Lord has peace for us, and he's the one that's done the work in us. Uh, you didn't get saved because of your works. It was the work of Christ in us. What a blessing. And then uh, verse 3, I know uh, Miss Brandy got some help from this verse this past week. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah's everlasting strength. There's a lot of wonderful preaching in this chapter. But I'm interested tonight down to verse number 20. The Bible says in verse number 20, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the goodness of God. Lord, we have much to praise you for. Lord, we realize everything we have, everything we aspire to be, everything we long for all came from the hand of God. And Lord, we thank you for being good to us. Lord, thank you for our church. Thank you for their desire to impact souls both here and abroad. And God, thank you for folks that love you and want to serve you. Lord, I pray for those that are working with the teens. Lord, you'd bless their efforts. And Lord, we know those young people are faced with this whole wicked world and faced with peer pressure that, Lord, we didn't even know existed back in our day. Lord, I pray you'd put a hedge about those young people. I pray you'd protect their minds and their lives. Uh, and God, I pray the word of God that's being put into them right now, Lord, uh, will help sustain them even in the evil day. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God. I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel, edify and encourage and enlighten your people. And God, will bless you and praise you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful, holy, glorious, and blessed name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. We find in Isaiah chapter 26, toward the end of this chapter, we find that... Uh, it is dealing with the Lord's uh, literal second coming. Uh, we know that when the church is raptured out of here, or tr the translation of the saints, uh, the Lord don't come back to the earth. We rise to meet him in the air. Uh, but he is literally going to come back to this earth. Uh, we find that in Revelation 19. We find it in uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 14. We find it here in Isaiah 26. And throughout the, uh, many portions in the Scripture, there's coming a day... Uh, He's literally going to come back to this earth. Uh, he's going to land on the Mount of Olives. He's going to split the Mount of Olives. Uh, and he's going to put an end uh, to the battle that happens in the Valley of Megiddo when all nations have turned against Israel. Uh, he's going to show up and defend Israel when it looks like Israel uh, is going to be wiped off of the face of the earth. Uh, and he's going to settle the score. Uh, he's going to come... Uh, 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 with vengeance in his, uh, 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 in his hand and he is going to put an end to what uh, this old wicked world has went through for these 2,000 years uh, when we've been warning he's a coming. And we know that uh, 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 in that time he will set up uh, his reign and he'll rule and reign from Jerusalem for a 1,000 years after his coming. But these verses is a sign to Israel that he's coming and he's coming in his glory. You see, that's why many of the Jews didn't believe on him when he came the first time. They was expecting the Messiah to come in his glory. They didn't uh, uh, read the prophecies that he'd be born of a virgin. They didn't read the prophecies he'd be born in Bethlehem. They didn't see all the prophecy about the cross. They just saw him coming in his glory. Uh, and with that in mind, notice a few things here that he is speaking to his people. Notice the invitation. He says, come my people. Boy, I'm glad I heard the invitation of God when I was a sinner when he said, come. Let him that is a thirst drink of the water of life freely. But what a blessing that one day we'll hear another invitation. 
Can I say, uh, 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 there's coming a day, and we find in Revelation chapter number 4, uh, when the Lord's going to step out on the clouds and say, come up hither, uh, and we're going to rise to meet him in the air. Uh, uh, the trump of God shall sound, and with the shout and the voice of the archangel, uh, 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 the dead in Christ rise first, uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, aren't you glad for the invitation that is about to happen? I believe we're living in the last days. I believe we're living in the last of the last days. And my dear friends, if we're going to do anything for God, we better get busy and do it. And so we see the invitation come, my people. I'm glad I'm counted one of His. Hmm? Huh? What a blessing to be known of Him. What a blessing that He is mine and I am His. Uh, we see the invitation, but now notice the insulation. He said, Enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. We find that he is telling Israel uh, to enter into their chambers, uh, insulate themselves from what's about ready to happen. And my dear friends, we read in the scriptures that when he comes and he settles the score at Megiddo, that the blood will flow to the bit of the horse's mouth of all the slain bodies, and the carcasses will be left for the fowls. He is telling them to insulate themselves for the, from that. Can I say, you and I are insulated from it by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Aren't you glad that uh, uh, we're not going to have to, some teach, uh, we're not going to have to go through the tribulation period. I'm glad he's going to deliver us out of all of this mess. Uh, and what insulates us is the blood of Christ. Uh, what a blessing that we're washed in the blood and sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, but then notice, if you will, the indignation. Look with me in verse number 20. He says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Uh, he says, For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. We see the Lord's coming back, and he's not coming back as a babe in the manger. He's not coming back as the meek and lowly. He's not coming back as the broken shell on Calvary. He's coming back as the Lord of glory. And he's coming back in the fierceness and indignation and wrath of Almighty God. And can I say, he's coming back not with grace, but he's coming back with judgment, and he's coming back to punish. Can I say in the day of the Lord, he's going to punish sinners. Look what it says in verse 21. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. He's coming to punish sinners. Sinners are going to face the wrath of God. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we go out on Monday nights passing out the gospel. That's why we try to bid people uh, uh, to get under the gospel before it's everlasting too late. Uh, now the message to sinners is come, uh, be saved, uh, be redeemed. Uh, come, have your sins washed. Uh, though your sins be as scarlet, they can be washed as wool. Uh, uh, today the message to sinners is come. Uh, but there's coming today the message for sinners uh, is it's time to pay the piper. There's a payday someday. And in this text we find he's coming to punish sinners. Uh, uh, and I know modern preaching, and it's not popular to preach on the judgment hand of God. Because God's a God of love. He is. It's one of his very attributes. But he's also a God of wrath. And God for 6,000 years has tolerated man and his sinning and man and his ignorance and man and his wickedness. And there comes a day when God says enough is enough. Yeah, and in this text we find it's that day. He's coming to punish sinners. But not only that, he's coming to punish society. He's coming to punish the nations. The governments of this world that have rejected Jesus Christ. In Matthew 25, verse 31, the Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, uh, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, uh, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. There's coming a day. He's going to punish the nations and what they've done with Him. Do you know there have been nations that the gospel has been presented to their emperor or their king, and they said no, and that nation will stand before God as one who rejected him 
Can you imagine the souls that are going to die and go to hell because some emperor didn't want the gospel to be preached in their nation? Do you know over uh, uh, two-thirds of the world's population has never heard the name Jesus Christ? Now, a lot of it is emperors and nations fault. A lot of it's because Baptists have been lazy and not got the gospel out. God help us, huh? Can I say he's coming to punish sinners? He's coming to punish society? And I know you're all real sober thinking, where in the world is this going, preacher? I got good news. He's coming to punish Satan. Look in chapter 27 and verse number 1. In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, that, uh, the piercing serpent, uh, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, uh, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. That Leviathan right there he's talking about is Satan. Can I say, uh, he's coming, there's coming a day when he's going to get his. There's coming a day when he's going to be thrown off into the lake of fire forever and ever. Uh, he'll burn for every sin he ever caused. Uh, he'll burn for every wicked lie he ever told. Uh, he'll burn for every home that he ever split. Uh, uh, he'll uh, burn for every vile thing he ever introduced to this world. Uh, he is going to get his due, my dear friends. Uh, but just before that, he'll be sentenced. Uh, just before that, he'll bow before the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and proclaim the Lord Jesus as Lord of Lords and King of Kings uh, and then uh, he'll be bound hand and foot and thrown off into the lake of fire uh, I say blessed be the name of the Lord I say glory to the Lord uh, what a day it's going to be to see Satan get the punish punishment he deserves uh, Amen. Mm, but y'all rest at ease I'm not preaching on any of that stuff I'm interested in something in verse 20, chapter 27, verse 1. The Bible says, In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan. I'm interested in his sore and great and strong sword. With God's help tonight, I want to preach on his sore and great and strong sword. Hmm? What a blessing to know what the Lord is going to use to bring his punishment to this world. Mm -mm. Mm, can I say when he's talking about that sore and great and strong sword, we find what he means by that in the word of God. In Ephesians 6:17, the Bible says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. In Hebrews 4.12, the Bible says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, uh, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, uh, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Uh, Revelation 19.15, when he comes, uh, the Bible says this about the Lord Jesus, uh, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, uh, that with it he should smite the nations, uh, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, uh, and he treads at the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Uh, when he's talking about this sore and great and strong sword, uh, he's talking about the very Word of God. Uh, what a blessing, this very book that we hold in our hands. Uh, the very thing that Christ is going to use uh, to judge uh, this old wicked world. Uh, and I got to thinking as I was reading this, uh, I got to thinking about that uh, sore and great and strong sword. Uh, I got to thinking about the Word of God. Uh, let me give you a few things God put on my heart about the Word of God. Uh, can I say this about the Word of God? Uh, it is our authority. Uh, it is the absolute and final authority of our lives. Uh, I don't need to know what the government it says about my life. Uh, I don't need to know what anybody else thinks about my life. Uh, uh, what uh, I ought to rule my life by uh, is what thus saith the Lord. Uh, hey, uh, every decision we make ought to be based on what thus saith the Lord. Uh, it is uh, the most important thing, uh, uh, the most important tangible thing that we can ever embrace in this world uh, is the Word of God. Uh, can I say uh, it's our authority. Uh, it's the absolute standard of truth. Uh, you find that in Isaiah 8 and in Jeremiah 8 and 9 and throughout all 150 verses of Psalm 119 can I say the word of God is to be obeyed above tradition you 
know why a lot of people are going to die and go to hell? Because they go to church out of tradition. Because they serve God out of a ritual. Because they won't open up their heart to the Word of God and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. There are people that worship brick and mortar more than worship the Lord. It's not about tradition. It's not about, uh, oh, well, that's the way we've always done it. It's about minding the Lord and what the Lord says. Can I say the Word of God is magnified above God's very name in Psalm 138 and verse 2. Can I say the Word of God is unbroken and it's binding. We don't need some Dead Sea scroll somewhere. This Word is the final authority and it is complete. I don't need a new revelation. I need to live by the revelation God's given us. Hey, it's unbroken and it's binding. God's not going to judge me out of an atlas or out of an encyclopedia but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hey, can I say the word of God? It's our authority. It's not to be added to or subtracted from. We find in Revelation 22 and 18 and 19. Oh, hey, it amazes me how many want to add to it, uh, how many want to take away from it, uh, how many will say things like this, uh, well, what God really meant. Uh, no, God said what He meant, and He meant what He said. Uh, we don't need to correct it. Uh, we just need to believe it uh, and accept what thus saith the Lord. It is uh, our authority. Hmm? Well, preacher, I was thinking about this. What's the Word of God say? Well, preacher, I feel... Well, what's the Word of God say? Huh? It's our authority. Not our intellect. Not the way we feel. It amazes me how many people serve God based on how they feel. Your feelings change, but the Word of God's forever settled in heaven. It never changes. He changes not, neither does His Word. Do you know this Bible is the only tangible thing that you can put your hands on that will last forever? You want to say, well, souls last forever. Well, grab somebody's soul. You can't do it. But you can hold a Bible. Everything else in this world is going to be burned up. I thank God for the Word of God. Uh, what a shame. Some of you don't take advantage of it. You leave it in your car. You leave it on a bookshelf. You leave it somewhere else. And you don't take advantage of the privilege we have of having the Word of God. One of the missionaries we've supported this church has supported longer than I've been here. It was supported when I came. Brother Lewis Turk. I got an email from Brother Turk last night. Brother Turk has served in Indonesia for going on three decades. And one of his burdens was for those people to have a Bible in their language. I got an email from him last night that they finally got the New Testament completely translated into the language of the Indonesian people. What a blessing. Amen. But he's been doing that for three decades. Can I say for those three decades, I've had one on my shelf. What a privilege to have the Word of God. Can I say it's our authority? Can I say this about the Word of God? It is God-breathed. Mm. You pay attention right here. I don't mean to make people mad. It's just my nature. This Bible is divinely inspired. Mm. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Uh, can I say that God breathed this Bible into existence? Uh, can I say, people say, man wrote the Bible. No, God used some uh, 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 40 men over uh, 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 4,000 years. But can I say... If I write a letter, and you receive the letter, and you don't like what it says, do you chew out the ink pen? If you like it, do you give the credit to the ink pen? Well, the pen wrote it. But what was the inspiration behind the pen writing it? Me. Can I say God used men as pens to pen it down? But it was God that spoke to holy men of God uh, 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 who uh, uh, were used of God to pin down the very words of God uh, in His will. You know how I know that man didn't write the Bible? Because this Bible tells us how wicked man is. Mm. Uh, can I say, the Bible is not a record of man's search for God. 
The Bible is just the opposite. It's the record of God's search for man. From Genesis chapter 3 down about verse number 8, when Adam and Eve sinned in a garden, it wasn't Adam looking for God. Uh, God came looking for Adam and he cried out, uh, Adam, where art thou? Uh, and friend, uh, whatever gutter God found you in, uh, whether it's on a church pew or on a bar stool, it was God.
Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.